For over 40 years, this recipe has been in my family. Now, coming straight to your dining table from a Kansas City Steakhouse, it's Plaza 3 Steak Soup. You've got to try this. Let's make it together. Let's go. I've already done one side of this, so I'm going to do the other side now. And sprinkling with kosher salt. Dry aging pulls out moisture and then sucks in the salt. So it seasons your beef. And I'm going to let this go overnight, 12 to 16 hours or so, and it'll be ready for when we cook. I have some of this lovely seasoning here. And I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of this. The lovely spice blend. And I just add a little extra flavor, a little more depth of flavor to our meat. I have the beef sitting on a rack on top of a plastic cutting board, which I can then sanitize. Always wash your hands. Always wash all surfaces when you're dealing with raw meat. I will then put this on a cookie sheet, put it back in the fridge where it can dry age overnight for our soup preparation tomorrow. Now that our steak has been dry aging for at least 24 hours, that's where we put an application of salt. And I also put some salt grass seven spice on there as well. I'm taking the steak and cutting them up into uh, bite-sized chunks. Doesn't have to be too precise, just nice bite-sized chunks. I used to start with bigger chunks, but then I would end up cutting them down to spoon size, if you will. And at some point anyway, so I'm, you know, let's just skip the middle end. And give that a try this time. And there you go. Now our beef is ready for the cast iron skillet. Okay, now we are browning the beef in the skillet. Trying to get a nice crust on them. I've been heating up the oil. So we start off in that medium low heat. We can start to bring that heat up some. We should start getting a nice crust in these soon. Yeah, I can already see some starting here. I'm gonna bring up the heat a little bit more. Trying to get these big pieces to touch the bottom. It's all right, guys. Everyone's getting turned. Just, just come on. It's gonna be all right. Just wait your turn. You cannot go wrong with a cast iron pan. You really can't. The original never fails. The way it retains heat. You can put it in the oven, you can put it in like 900 degrees and the thing still rocks. So, hey, don't quote me on that. I just know you can get it really hot. <laughs> hey, that guy said you could do 900 degrees and then mine melted. Hey, viewer beware. <laughs> There's a lot of love happening in this pan right now as our dry age, pre-salted, spiced beef is giving off so much love. And when we add the water for a braise, it's going to bring so much flavor to the soup. It's going to be fantastic. You guys have to try this. I'm going to try to add about two cups of water. Let's see how much this vessel can hold. Yeah. All right, that's two cups. And what we want to do now is we're going to bring this to a boil. And we're going to simmer this for a while and let the meat chill out, just being all happy together. And what this is going to do is this is going to help tenderize the meat bring lots of flavor to the party and, and later we will add all of this directly into the soup. As our steak is rocking away in the cast iron skillet we have salt better than bouillon, stick of butter, flour, we have diced tomatoes in a can, a whole onion, celery, and carrots. Let's get to work. Okay I just checked on our steak it's still has a nice low simmer in the cast iron skillet where we are braising it and it's helping to tenderize the meat. 
as you can see, I already got half an onion done. Look at that movie magic. So next up, let's get this other half done. My wife was really helpful. She helped me uh, clean up the kitchen. <laughs> and if you look around, uh, <laughs> this is the cleanest it's been in a long time. It probably will be for a while now. If you <laughs> We're like any other home. Architectural Digest or something like that, they visited Jennifer Garner. And she has a, a farm style house in, in LA. Well, she said that also on camera. Jennifer Garner said, document this now. This is the cleanest my kitchen counter island will ever be. Has been in a long time, so please, make sure you get this. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know the feeling. All right, so yeah, my wife was a really big help. She helped actually uh, prepare and uh, get the uh, outer off the uh, onion. So now, let's take this onion down to size. I've spent a couple decades uh, making salsa, so I'm no stranger to cutting up loads of onions, and I'm no stranger to doing a small dice as quickly as possible. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of blazing through it. And as you can see here, I've cut all these nice little segments along the way. I mean, that's the worst way to say it. You can tell I'm not a real chef. All right, so basically, yeah, I cut it one direction. My, one of my daughter's favorite groups, by the way. And then now I'm cutting, and what it does is, look at that, beautiful little pieces right off the bat. If you just take the time to cut it this particular way, you can make really quick work of any onion. And we're almost there already. So what I do now is, you won't see this anywhere else. Well, maybe you will. But uh, what I do is I kind of just do this rocking horse back and forth, where I'm sliding my very sharp knife through the onion, keeping my hand on top, okay? In a safe position, but also to help guide, all right? And we, my wife, who's been made the soup more than I have, by the way. Her, my mom and my wife have made the soup more than I have, but, she was very insistent. She's like, uh, I want a nice small dice in it. Said, yes, honey, I got you, baby. Now that our onion has a small dice, it's ready to go in a bowl. Time to do the celery. Got half of it here, and time to do the other half. Look at that, beautiful green celery. And voila, celery ready to go. Two down, one to go. We have celery, onion, time for carrots. I've taken the, the smallest part of the carrot and I've cut it thin. And then the biggest part I cut in half. Because you don't want too big of a piece in each spoonful of soup that you get. So you can actually help that ahead of time by doing this. All right, so let's get at it. Just kind of want small pieces. A, a couple of coins uh, in thickness. If I were to take a guess at what I'm trying, when I say trying, we'll see how it works out. So, again, cutting discs out of these smaller pieces of carrot. There we go. So I don't like to line up multiples. Um, I need to be precise. I don't want any accidents. And I've run into some problems before when I tried to you know, mechanize the process and have multiple carrots running. So I just find that you're just doing one at a time works out best. Ladies and gentlemen, the trinity of flavor, celery, carrots, onion, it's time to make that roux. All right, as you guys can see over here, our meat, I've lowered it, I'm gonna bring it up slightly more. It's been simmering for a long time. It's reduced. There's a lot of love right there in that pan, man. All right, all that flavor coming off the beef. Oh, that's what's going to make this soup so spectacular. We need a stick of butter and one cup of flour. There's that stick of butter. Put it on in. All right. I don't want it too hot, but I do want this butter to melt. So a roux is basically a, the combination of a fat, like butter, and some flour, okay? And when you combine the two, it creates kind of a paste. What this does is, this roux 
then thickens our soup, okay? This is the thickener, all right? The, the combination of butter and flour. So first off, melting that butter, we're doing that now. At some point, there we go. Kind of chop this up a little bit. Here we go. Stir that around. And then yes, we will slowly incorporate, slowly incorporate that flour into here. Magic. Well, science. Okay. Whatever you want to call it. Something special is going to happen. This will act as a thickener. Creating a luscious, silky mouthfeel. A little stir over here. Don't worry, guys. Your moment in the sun is coming. Just wait. All right, we're almost there, guys. That's right. Got to talk to the beef. Now that our butter is melted, Okay, we're going to slowly bring in some flour, okay, grab a whisk for now, and you don't want to rush this process, okay, you don't want to rush this process because um, there's one thing about, you, you want to cook out right, the taste of the flour. All right, and that's that's an important factor in doing this kind of work. So we're slowly, slowly, loud enough, huh? Slowly incorporating that flour into the butter. Eventually, the flour will reach a saturation point. Okay, and it'll start to get thick of its own accord, creating a taste. Oh, we're already getting there. Check it out, guys. All right, can you guys see that kind of thicken down there? Kind of gumming up, if you will. I'm gonna turn on the heat slightly. Okay. Yeah, definitely turn on the heat slightly. All right, a little, little bit more. a one-to-one -one ratio okay stick of butter to a cup of flour all right and it gets to, it's, it's starting to get thicker check it out guys anyone remember wallpaper okay and that kind of gluey crap on the back oh you know some of the worst times of my life was having to remove wallpaper from old homes and believe me i've grown up and been around lived in and visited enough ancient New England homes, okay, where I grew up. Uh, these homes were ancient of days. You know, I swear, like, one of our houses was used by people, like, a few days after they got off the Mayflower. I mean, this sucker was old, and, I, and my sister and I swore we saw skeletons in the ancient basement down there. All right, check it out, guys. But, you know, our imaginations told us they were. Because, I mean, it had that vibe. Alright? It just, it was, uh, it was creepy old. There really could have been skeletons. But I, I, I don't know. I mean, who do, why do I know? There really were. So, yeah, it was a really old place. So, moving on. As I keep bumping my camera. You're welcome. Only the best. Alright, so check it out, guys. Check out that cool looking, look at that. That, my friends is the development of a lovely roux. All right, stirring in. Again, one-to-one -one ratio, believe it or not. I'm gonna keep bringing this together. Keep bringing this together. Creating a nice thick paste. <laughs> this is some of my best camera work ever. You should see the contortion level stuff I'm having to do to shoot this and do all the actual culinary work at the same time. It's kind of redonkulous. So, all right, here we go. I'm just going to go for it. Hey, I don't really care. 
Alright, this, no, I, I do care. Just kidding, I do. Alright, so, we're making the paste as I keep hitting the camera. You know what, and I wouldn't hit the camera at all if I used my left hand. Ambidextrous, I am not. A nerd, I am. So, my friends. Now, now that we have this lovely, as I shake down the whole house, we're going to start incorporating some water into this. I'm going to start off with about... Alright. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Slowly. i turn up the heat a little bit. Turn up the heat slightly. Bring a little bit more water to the party. Like that. And then start, start incorporating this, okay? More, more water. So in my measuring cup, I have a total of two cups. Um, and I'm just going to slowly incorporate those. Of the total volume of water, this is, uh, I don't know, about a fourth of what we're going to eventually use. Okay, check it out though, guys. See how, see how the thickening power of the soup is exponentially growing right now? I don't really know if it's exponential. But it's a cool word. Alright, so we're stirring, we're stirring, we're stirring. Okay, we're incorporating. If I turn up the heat a little bit more, I can get a little bit more color on this. Okay. What at the meaning closer to a light brown. Right now, it is extremely powerful thickener. I can feel it. There's a lot of resistance. A lot of resistance against my whisk right now. Okay? That tells me that we are achieving maximum thickness ability. Thickness attitude, thicker. It, it's just gonna be really thick. All right, so we, we're stirring, we're stirring. Look at that. That's looking awesome. Look at that, guys. All right, I'm gonna let it sit for a moment. I do want to add some more water. Check it out just right there. Our beef is still rocking away over there. Guys, it's almost your time. The rock stars of the party, you guys are almost ready. Meanwhile, backup singer is still doing the job right now. We're building the roof. Time to add a lot more water to this. Four cups. Two more cups. Add some lovely better than bouillon. Okay. You can also use beef stock. And if you don't have beef stock, but this better better than bouillon is really good stuff and it adds a lovely beef flavor. It amplifies the beef flavor. Okay. Of course, we're getting tons from our meat which has been braising for a long time. And around this time, it's time to put the kids in the pool. Starting with, these take the longest to cook, and the celery, but definitely the carrots. So the carrots, they go in. Our celery, into the pool. Our onion, into the pool.
Oh, would you look at that? It's starting to look like soup. So again, we built the roux. So far we've added at least six of cups. I think we're upwards to eight at this point of water. Our better than bouillon. Our celery, our carrots, and our onion. It's like a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes with the juice and all, all part of the flavor profile. So our tomatoes are in. Okay, turning off the heat from our beef, our steak that's been braised for so long, it's time to add that, add it to the pool. Okay, and all that the delicious braising liquid all that flavor, all that love. You can, of course, make this vegetarian, okay? If you have a beef substitute, or if you just wanna bypass the flavor of beef altogether, this is a, an extremely delicious vegetable soup of its own accord, all right? So if you're vegetarian, there's some dietary restriction, you can definitely adjust that, right? And not add the beef, do a substitute, or not at all. When I eat this soup, I actually prefer it with minimal steak. Um, it just, I'm not sure why, but the point is this. It is completely delicious on its own. I have the heat on high. I'm trying to bring this to a boil. Okay, you want to bring the whole thing to a boil and then you reduce and simmer for at least a couple hours, if not more. So for now, the heat's on high. And also at this point, you can begin to do some initial, some early days taste testing to adjust for salt levels. Maybe add some pepper if you're interested. So salt and pepper, make some adjustments, flavor to taste. You can do that now. Of course, you really want to make some major adjustments a couple hours from now. When this, all the flavors begin to mingle, when the carrots and the celery begin to soften, became, become fork tender, that's when you really want to make your final adjustments. But you can do some early day stuff right now. An early taste test here. And I want to see if I need to add any. Yeah, salt and pepper. A little bit. Not too much. You take it easy. A little bit of salt. Using kosher salt. Yeah. One more. Some fresh ground black pepper. You know, I never thought about it before. But these colors. The green, the red, the white. Kind of Christmassy, huh? Never thought about this as a Christmas soup. But it is, I love these colors of this soup. Hey, can I tell you a secret? I've discovered something in my exploration of savory cooking through the years that adding other flavors, such as a little bit of chicken to a lovely beef stew, adds a level of umami is that that's that elusive like gotta have it this is an amazing can't put, put my finger on it but this is amazing so what i'm gonna do is don't tell anyone i'm gonna add just a little bit a little bit of this roasted chicken better than bouillon Shh, remember it's a secret okay I'm just adding just a little bit don't tell my mom all right now that I've added some salt and pepper, I'm gonna give another taste here. Better. For now, that'll work. Yeah, that made a huge difference. Huge difference. The heat is still on high, and we're bringing this sucker to a boil. After it's achieved boiling states, we'll then reduce to simmer and let it sit. Again, minimum two hours. We finally reached a good boil. Now we can reduce our heat and simmer for at least two hours. One cup of corn, 
one cup of peas. And now we add a cup of corn and we add a cup of peas. Please. Our soup has now been on low, really low, for several hours. And we added our corn and peas. So the family's all here and the party can begin. The final stage is let this sit for maybe another 20, 30 minutes. Do a final taste test, see if you need any salt and pepper, and then serve and enjoy. Plaza three steak soup. It's gonna be scrum diddly umptious. Hoorah! With every bite, it's like getting a warm hug. Completely delicious, completely homemade. And yet from a prestigious Kansas City Steakhouse to my family 40 years ago. I hope you guys give this a try. You're gonna love it. Join me next time and hit that subscribe button. Have a good night.